uh, hey, what's going on? Once again, I'm delaying my uploading, but I do apologize, but it's been a while and I promise you I will be trying to keep up to date. But as you can see, we've moved to a new studio and I will be sharing more behind the scenes of building the studio and film related content. But right now today, as you've seen by the title, I wanna share with you my first hand honest experiences of me using the MacBook Pro, the 2021 version, 16 inch Pro version. Um, so I will give you an in-depth review in the coming weeks uh, running all the editing softwares and all the film related products, right? But today I just wanna give you my two weeks honest uh, opinion. So let's start with the bad. First of all, the ergonomics, the size, as you know, this is huge. My previous Mac is the M1 and I've used it for pretty much not my daily driver, I do use a desktop, but it is my computer to go to as I travel a lot. And this being the last couple of weeks, I have been traveling domestically. It is very heavy. It's in my film bag with my camera, with the lenses added. This thing really brings down the weight, right? The size, it's good, but the weight, it's heavy, right? It's nothing to be, you know, carrying out all the time, traveling, etc. I like to have pizzas and then I like to put this on my lap or on my stomach while I lean down and eat my pizza. I'm just lazy, but with this, I can't, right? On a full stomach, this thing on my stomach, it just, I don't feel too well after, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of this weight pushing down on my stomach after a full meal. So don't copy me, kids, and don't follow what I do, but hey, just thought I'd bring it out there. But the second thing I think a lot of people complaining about is the notch, and definitely it is an eyesore at the beginning. I've had this for two weeks, and I think Apple notices this. I mean, the default wallpaper that they give you is, let me show you actually. Um, they even have a setting here in the uh, control panels here. If you go down, sorry, my in Chinese right now, but there is a set setting. Basically what it says, it automatically hides your menu status when you're on full screen. As you can see, the top menu automatically hides and that kind of makes it subtle, right? When you watch a movie, it, it's a full black screen. Uh, it's only when your mouse goes to the top, you actually see the menu bar. So you can turn that function off, but it's on by default and I think Apple does that on purpose, right? They know that the notch is there and they don't want you to notice it. Uh, to be honest, after two weeks of use, uh, especially given a 16 inch screen, your main focus is on the main screen, your productivity is on the main screen, so you're not really looking up at the notch. Uh, this might be a little bit problematic if you're using a 14 inch screen, but for me, to be honest, I don't really notice it after a while. And given the extra real estate on the screen by slimming the borders, I'm happy to put up with the notch. It's Apple, if I was a owner of the Apple, I wouldn't give you everything that you wanted, right? Because I want you to upgrade to the next model. The next big thing that I don't like is, I think, it's not that I don't like, it's something that you want to keep in mind, is the black keyboard, the analyzed keyboard backlit. It's beautiful, right? I love it, it's great. But being black, there's one thing you gotta be careful is that it's actually very visible to stains and dirt and dust. That's something to keep in mind, black keyboard, uh, it is more visible. And lastly, it's just the looks, right? Uh, it's kind of taken a step back. Some people like it, some people don't. For me, I, I don't like the look. Right? It, it's a very, it's a classic safe approach from Apple and that's understandable. Every big company who delivers a product for the worldwide millions of users, they wanna be safe, right? It's proven to work, they make subtle changes. It's just like the iPhone, it went from a square to a rounded edge, now it's back to a square. At least it's given us all the ports. So overall, look, I don't mind it. It's not a big deal. I mean, even the edges, it's a lot smoother now, whereas the previous M1 models, because the gradual curvature of the screen, it actually cuts into your hand. So it feels a lot nicer actually, but in terms of looks, it looks very fat and beefy, even though this is actually slimmer than the previous model. It's just higher with its legs. So those are the things I don't like, but let's talk about the things that I do like, and, and I think this is what you're really into. First and foremost, actually, is the sound. This thing is a killer. I've actually made a video of where I blindfolded my friends to test the sound. It's actually in Chinese, unfortunately, but if you like it, I can make it an English version and translate it for you. We tested different Macs, the M1, the Intel version, and this one, as well as just an actual speaker, and majority of people pick this one because of the surround sound. It sounds great for, for a laptop and I think Apple's outdone themselves in terms of sound. Uh, the second one is actually the battery life. Uh, I've got the Pro version, not the Max version, and for my testing, the Pro version do last longer than the Max because it's using less, right? Less, less of its hardware. Uh, in terms of voltage, it's using around 30 to 35 watts, depends on what you do, but through my render, that's what I'm getting. Whereas a Max is going up to 40 and 46 watts. So it's using more power, it's draining more power, even though it's the same battery size. And being 16 inch, uh, it's really capable, right? It's giving you longer lasting battery. 
If you want the extra battery, go low power mode for the 60 inch. Unplugged, it's still full performance, like no caps there, no throttling, so I love it, right? And of course, the display, I mean, this is what you're buying this for, right? You basically have a mini XDR display, right? The brightness, uh, it's actually 500 nit, unless you display an HDR display. So majority of the time, this is running at, look, I'm on, this is max brightness, right? And it's 500 nit, the same as the previous model. So when you have a HDR, it'll recognize that and it'll actually light up that portion of the video in maximum of 1600 nit, which is great, right? It looks spectacular. See that, the brightness just went up. I don't know if you can tell, but it just went up. Let me turn the sound off and you're getting super clear, crispy colors, and it looks fantastic. Even at right now, the studio light, you can see how bright my monitor is, right? And if I just turn it down and just go to, say, 4K, now you can straight away see that just went dim. Uh, ProMotion, 120 hertz, to be honest, you don't realize it. It's one of those things that you get on it and you feel like, oh, the experience is so good, the, the computer is so snappy and it's it's great right it's so smooth and i think that's one of the things you don't realize it until you go back to your old one you have something to compare with but everyday use you get used to it and you feel like hey it's good to have uh speaking of promotion safari is not supported and i mean come on apple this is like probably the one of the most used apps with promotion and you're not supporting it so that's a bummer another thing i like 16 by 10 ratio i mean with the notch hey we're getting a bigger bigger display which is great for editors you know at the end of the day we're 16 by 9 we get the extra inch perfect uh, in terms of the color i chose the silver uh, i don't know most of people choose gun, gun metal uh, gray so to say i have the gray for my m1 it looks great i think it looks industrial looks clean mint looks tough uh, it looks very young as well anything you go larger i think you know 16 inch size and i would preferably the silver it's classic it looks luxury it looks clean uh, minimal and, and i just feel so expensive you know <laughs> and, and i think that's that's where i wanted to be of course it always hides scratches a lot better as well and i just love the silver and i think the minimalistic and, and the overall cleanness the lines i think it shows a lot better so i love the silver and i definitely go check out the stores which one you like it's a, it's timeless you know it's kind of like me it's timeless you know i'm old but I think I'm at an age where I think I want to go something more subtle, more mature. So silver is definitely the one for me, but yeah, gunmetal. Hey, if you're young and you're active and you're strong, go for it. I'm not saying I'm not, but you know what I mean. Another thing I like is the fan. Well, the lack of the fan, it never comes on, right? I have never had the fan on, at least on my last two weeks of traveling. Definitely don't buy it for the fan if you want to go for a 60 inch, even though it has bigger fans and bigger vents, don't buy it because of the better airflow, right? Because I think they're pretty good. 14 inch will do the job at the same spec level. Uh, the fan won't come on, even for the pro. And then I mentioned the keyboard before, there's no touch bar. To be honest, I've actually used the touch bar, right? I like it how you can scroll between the brightness and the volume and I use it uh, before. I'm not a huge fan, but I don't hate it. Uh, with the change, I also welcome that as well. The escape key in particular, I love that. It gives you that a certainty, right? Whereas the old one, the touch bar is just an escape bar. You touch it and it's a solid glass, right? It, there's no feedback. So now a lot more assuring. The keyboard, I think they've gone back and it feels great. There's a little bit more travel compared to my M1 and that feels perfect. Finally, just the ports, right? The ports is a godsend. SD card, right now, all the film I do, I just go straight in here, edit and then out. Workflow, super handy, no more dongles. Uh, love the Thunderbolt 4. You know, a little bit disappointed that it's a UHS 2, not a 3, even though we don't have that, but I guess future proofing would be great. HDMI 2.0, hey, you know, preferably 2.1, but if they don't give it to you, I'm not complaining either. It's not something that I use all the time. Um, I did have this hooked up to four different monitors, so three through Thunderbolt and one from HDMI, right? I had Logic Pro running as well, uh, 1500 tracks. Right, that's, that was my test and it was fine. So Logic Pro took, I think, 22 seconds to the load with the 1500 tracks, but that is super fast, even at today's standards. And finally, look, I have not mentioned anything about performance, right? Because I think I want to once save that for my upcoming video with the DaVinci to show you with the specs and how it runs. Ultimately, look, I don't think you're going to use all of this laptop, right? It's a great beast. And I don't think many of us won't use up to 50 or even 90% of the capabilities, right? Unless you're really doing it for work. So on a daily basis, this is more than enough. I mean, I will even stir you to the M1 if you're just your daily use. I'm not gonna touch too much on, on this, but I can just tell you right now from my daily test, like 8K footage uh, editing off my uh, Sony, um, 
runs fine. And another thing is I don't want people to just jump on the moment and think, oh, this is an ultimate computer and you can edit a lot of videos, especially for those who do use DaVinci Resolve. I think a lot of reviews need to realize that DaVinci Resolve 17.4 made a lot of upgrade to the uh, M1 computers, right? I can't give all the credit to the M1, right? It's because of the optimization of the 17.4 version versus the preview version that we can run a lot of the programs. Of course, this, there's, there is a decoder in here and all that good stuff. I think they go hand in hand, but I think people need to be rational about not being impulsive and buying it. And this is very expensive. I don't want you to go out and just to spend, you know, $1,500 or $2,000 just to buy one of these uh, babies. They're very expensive, right? So please be responsible. End of the day, this is a tool. Uh, it is a great tool. Uh, if you need it and really have the need for, for something like this, but um, be responsible and stay tuned, subscribe, and I will definitely show you my rundown of the DaVinci Resolve uh, breakdown. I've also got a couple of other MacBook related uh, tutorials on setting it up and a few tips and tricks and a few more exciting tests. Hopefully I'll get that on time, but until then, if you stay to the end, thank you. Uh, do leave a like or comment and I'll catch you soon. Peace.